All right, whatever. We've clearly screwed up once, so hello, stream. Good evening, and welcome to a surprisingly quick start to Commentary's <laughs> Magic's stream uh, deck discourse for a fun little thing called Hot Wings. I am, as always, Grandpa's. I am Emperor Vugle. Big Cheese. And Ara Cat. So... This will take a little bit because, as it turns out, Macs are really, really bad at doing streaming. Just, just a bit. <laughs> um, we can confirm this, and I'm pretty sure that we can have uh, Team Pandaponium confirm this as well, because, oh my god. Yes, can confirm. But while we're sitting here waiting, we have definitely a fun, uh, kind of unique stream for you, at least as far as typical sim streams planned this evening. Uh, we've seen already, just in the last few weeks since the set release, some exciting cards that are definitely shifting the meta in perhaps unforeseen ways. Bugle, would you agree? Yeah. Ara, Big Cheese, can confirm cool cards? Eh, Very cool. Eh, cool cards. You know what, though? Um, there is this one card. It's a pretty old card. It's still pretty good, though. Is, is it's it a card called Rainbow Shine? No. It, yeah. No, it's called Pile of Presents. It's back. It never left! Why, why was... no? I don't enjoy this image. <laughs> why do you it ask? Was... It was only sleeping. Well, I mean, I haven't seen anyone playing it outside of Babs. I mean, I posted a deck list the other day, but I still haven't seen anyone playing it. Or do you folks know something I don't? No. Maybe. No, I have no, no. idea. No, I'm I just bluffing. I just wanted an excuse to post that image again. Man, oh, I'm already well, okay. up to my I'm already up to my ears in combo. I don't need to go back to pile. I would like Pile to be a pink one. Well, we don't have to talk about Pile, but we do have to talk about pink today. Yes, we do. And that's fine. I'm fine talking about pink. In fact, pink is fun. Pink is fun. You know what else is fun with pink? Blue? Yes. How did you know? Every other color? I'm psychic. Yes. Clearly. You know what's fun with pink? More pink! I mean, you're not wrong. E-pies? Pinkie Pies sometimes. Sometimes Pinkie Pies are a lot of fun. So, Do we have enough of them yet? Enough Pinkie Pies, I believe? Well, I know we have enough to at least be able to run the mono Pinkie Pie deck. I just don't know if we have enough problems. <laughs> we have problems that all have Pinkie Pie on them, at least. Does that count? Probably. I mean, Tough Call has Pinkie Pie on it, and that's a good one to confront. Although, well, I think yesterday you were trying to make the claim that I should be running um, Concerning Cutie Mark over something, because it's like, this is technically Pinkie Pie, it's Pinkie Pie's model. Or something. Are we still, are we still stalling while we get things set up? Probably a bit. Is this stretching? How is everyone? How are, how are you? <laughs> How's life? Oh my god. <laughs> no, actually, who's excited for regionals? I am. Uh, Dat uh, play Matt. Dat Dat play Matt though. That's a yeah. play Matt. Yeah. You're you're just you you're just a hater because Luna. Yeah. Just he is just a Luna, Luna hater. hater. It's the new Luna Republic. See, if we could slap Cheerleader on a playmat, though, and he'd be ecstatic. Oh, yeah, absolutely. It'd be the worst playmat. It would! Terrible. Well, this is good. Ah, uh, there we go. Be better if it were Cadence. Raylor, I think that, uh, I think if Leo were here, he'd probably agree with you on that. I mean, I agree with him. Listen, bad. Win. Entered channel. Oops. Oh, that's cute. 
bad opinions, etc. Uh, okay. I think these. Are I the mean, I'm I'm far more excited for the Zap, but that's because I don't have a playset. Zap's a good card, and it's a good good looking card too. The foils look very mm -hmm. nice. Yes. So, really, though, I mean, let, let's be honest here. All of that, that's nice. Playmat, free cards, that's nice. People were really going to go there for the free buy. Let's be honest. Free in quotes. I mean, you have to earn it, but yeah. And, you know, some of us also have to travel to get the Well, sure. Well, okay, okay, yeah. The people who are interested in going to Gen Con to compete competitively are seeking out that to, free buy. To compete competitively. Some people aren't competing competitively. You can compete non-competitively. Absolutely. Here, where's, where's Leo? Oh let's, let's, get a, let's get a cadence deck from him. I mean, some people play at Gen Con for the promo and just to play a few games, and then that's it. They they don't care how well they do. Sure, there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. It's a no, great, yeah, absolutely. It, it's a great experience to be part of a huge playing field and to see all kinds of wacky things going on. Some wackier than others. Some definitely wackier than others. Fairy, you do this. Uh, I mean, that, that's a good thing to have on your bucket or off your bucket list, I guess. I know, uh, I know, Toon Boy really, really wants to get make top sixteen. He's been trying three years and hasn't made it yet. Maybe this year will be the year. Could be. I mean, it's nice that anyone who wants to participate in Continentals this year is able to. Yes. Though, sort of, uh, <laughs> Gen Con may have some uh, space issues. May does. Does, absolutely. Does. Past tense. In. Yeah, so if you don't have a four-day badge, you are not getting one unless you manage to get it from... I don't think you can hand transfer them, can you? You, you cannot. Your names are printed on the badges. Yes, so four-day badges are gone uh, you can, however, buy individual day badges, and I believe Saturday is gone. So you're not. So if you make top sixteen Friday and you can't show up Saturday, sorry, you all have a problem. Try to volunteer with the company, I guess, and see if they'll get you a volunteer badge. This sounds like a plan. It's I probably guess. the best way around it. Anyway, I'm sure if you did participate Friday and you didn't have a bad Saturday, like I'm sure Interplay would work something out with you. Okay. So But I I I, I don't know what and I obviously can't promise that they would. But yeah, if you want a badge, buy one sooner rather than later. Good luck. Anyway, in the interest of not stalling so much, uh I think I have something that'll work ready. Sure. Yay, work ready. Kind of. Kind of ready. Okay. Right. So, we have aggro decks to talk about today. Yes, we do. Yes. And you say decks plural. And yes. decks. It's true, kind of. Sort of. Yeah. Should we one and a half decks? Something like that. Should we go over a little bit of the of the history behind this? Uh, sure. Yeah. Okay. So back when spoilers for DOE were still coming out, and the set had just been revealed through pre-release. We, Bugle and I, and, you know, some of the other Sim members, uh, sat there and started looking at some of these incredibly strong aggro cards that we were going to be able to play with, specifically in the colors of blue and pink. Yeah, I saw the uh, Angel Wings and Spitfire back-to-back -back and was like, okay, pink-blue aggro is going to be the deck to beat. Like, I think I said something along those lines anyway. And mm -hmm. um, pink-blue aggro last year was the best not combo deck at Gen Con. 
So <laughs> it cracked top four. Yes, it, it did. So the question then at that point became, all right, so what's the focus? Because we knew that among the blue mains that you could run if you wanted to run blue pink, the focus was heavily on movement. Luna, of course, being able to move for free when you play friends to problems and Spitfire being able to move your friends from home. On the other side of the coin, if you wanted to run pink blue, there was Her Majesty permanently enthroned as best pink main of all time. Vinyl. Who, while she isn't necessarily as good in terms of movement efficiency, keeps your hand full. Very full. Oh my goodness. And that's very important. In fact, it's one of the key things that we were talking about uh, and what ultimately led us to these two lists. Um, so then the question just became, well, do we focus on building a deck for maximizing card advantage or building a deck to maximize movement and kind of face-off advantage? And then we said, why not both? ¿Por qué no los dos? And then the entire town celebrated it, and, you know, that was that, that whole thing. But the overall goal of Hot Wings, I think, could be summarized as a strategy of aggro decks, specifically aggro decks containing the colors pink and blue, that not only tries to reach 15 points as fast as possible, but packs enough disruption and removal tools to break through opposing walls and doesn't run out of gas. Yeah, yeah, that sounds right. This has historically been a weakness of aggro in the past, in that it's amazing when you have, say, a Bluna deck that, even in mono blue, uh, can just have these explosive first couple of turns of the game. But the problem you then run into is when your hand is empty, you're left without a lot of friends that you can play, so you can't make use of Bluna's ability quite as much. It gets and... really good performance, but the gas mileage sucks! Basically. And we kind of feared that this was going to be the case with a number of other aggro decks in different color combinations that would exist in this format as well. I mean, people already recognize the value of repeatable um, card saving and AT saving through Scootaloo last year. But, oh, yeah, absolutely. Sure. So, I mean, this is that's not necessarily anything new. But all of a sudden, there's a lot of methods of keeping your hand full of drawing cards uh, in color combinations that we may not have seen, and AT acceleration or cost reduction that's very, very good. And that allows a deck like this that has very, very fast, it plays at a very fast pace, to not run out around 8 or 9 AT. Or, I'm sorry, 8 or 9 points. Yeah, running out at eight or nine AT, that that's that's a problem. <laughs> that, is, that is a problem. You may have built something wrong then. Well, I mean, if you're in a format that only allows ten AT, then... <laughs> well, if you're in a format that only allows ten AT, you you know, do the same thing you do in every other format. You play combo clearly, exactly. <laughs> Except in this one, aggro is the name. Of yeah. The so yeah. So basically, these two decks have. The same strategies, they just focus on a different aspect. Uh, the vinyl strategy focuses more on keeping your hand full while uh, still delves into the movement tricks and all of that stuff, while the Luna strategy more focuses on the movement stuff and then also has a side strategy of keeping your hand full. Right. And because of this, each deck is going to have a slightly different play style with the vinyl version, which we're calling Original Hot, focusing on getting points wherever it can, even if that comes through single confronts, as long as it can maximize its card advantage, and then, of course, use that card advantage to fuel DFOs. Yeah. Whereas Bluna is going to be more likely to just have the burst turns and kind of turn itself on and off, as need be, but specializes in starting double problem face-offs for the minimal amount of AT possible. So where Vinyl might confront turn after turn and then DFO, 
Bluna might just sit there for a turn and bank, and then the next turn just kind of blow everything it's got for that turn until you know Gabby refills it. <laughs> ah, Griffins. So, as I said, the vinyl version, which is Bugle's preferred version of Hot Wings, we're calling Original Hot, and the Bluna version, which is my preferred version, we're calling Blazing. There may eventually be other variants, including Scootaloo, which might be, I don't know, like Mango Habanero or something along those you, lines. Seriously, we're not calling the Bluna one Blue Cheese? No, we can't call the Bluna one she's Blue Cheese. She's blue, and the moon's made of cheese. Why isn't it called Blue Cheese? Because that's the dipping sauce on the side, <laughs> not the flavor of the wings. I mean, you can, like, pour cheese all over hot wings. That's, that's totally a thing, right? Yeah, but it's still not the flavor of the hot wings. <laughs> do we wait? Do we have a Canadian version where it's poutine flavored? Not yet. <laughs> Vancouver, get on that. The call has been issued. Dipping sauce for the scootaloo wings. Yes, of course, the chicken wings. You thought that we weren't going to get through this without some chicken jump. <laughs> Come on. No, it's better than that. So to start things so, off, so so what's the uh, cruise director build? I'm sorry, um, which card? A nasty, <laughs> a nasty case of food poisoning. Ah, yeah. <laughs> Cursed has answered the call. Thank you, Cursed. To start things off, uh, Bugle, why don't you go over a little bit about the uh, unique elements of original hot? All right. So because uh. Because we're using vinyl here, um, one of the uh, really key things here is using the uh, our starting problem, actually. And the starting problem for both these decks is different because of the different play styles. And uh, it seems like a good place to start. So using con concerning cutie mark here is very, very important because berry punch plus any friend that we can play will flip our main turn two. Or... If we can't play any friends, we can move vinyl to still flip our main and still confront. Uh, I mean, normally, yes, you want to leave vinyl at home all the time, but she can get in there if she needs to. Uh, the uh, other, it, the other very fun way to flip vinyl is to play Tank, discarding a Spitfire. <laughs> Who uh, so Tank will draw you a card, discard Spitfire. You draw a card off Spitfire, flip vinyl. Of course, you know, you do need to draw a card um, on that turn already, so don't do this turn one on the play. You'll uh, you'll be a little sad. Uh, now, because we're using vinyl, we are actually only using six entry, which I believe is uh, less than uh, the Luna build is, correct? Is Luna running full eight? No, Luna's running seven. Seven, okay. Yeah. Uh, Slightly greedy. Yes. Slightly uh, greedy. Well, we, we can explain why uh, once we see the starting problem. Sure, um, of course. And uh, so we've got Tank, who, uh, as before mentioned, combos well with our berry punches and our um, Spitfires, in addition to just providing two blue entry and being a solid friend. And we've got Cloud Chaser, who, well, is Cloud Chaser. I mean, she enjoys lemon pudding cake. Having having cheaper cards is generally good, especially since uh, the vinyl build tends to need more turns to finish its games. So having some AT discount, pretty nice. Then we've got, uh, let's see, uh, we've got Lyra Bonds. This is our key form of bonus movement because, uh, you know, they make a best friend, and then you can drag that friend where with you wherever you want. Uh, good candidates include uh, Berry Punch, get you some more free cards, or Soren, or you know the big, the big uh, Spitfires that we're going to make, of course. Oh, or Night Glider, I guess. Maybe. I don't know. I mean, she's she's a card, I guess. You don't need her at problems, right? It's not like she even wanted to be in a face-off. Yeah, though Lyra, Lyra Bond plus almost any of your friends, except for the one power stuff, can confront just about anything in the deck, or, or anything in your problem deck, rather. So, you know, kind of nice. 
And uh, one of our other key cards here is, of course, Snips and Snails. Nothing says fun like playing Snips and Snails turn two and disrupting the opponent's strategy. Yes, it does. There's plenty of things that say fun that aren't that. <laughs> I know. You win games and tournaments. Like, have a break. Or maybe you could do something like uh, turn two Cloud Chaser into Angel Wings into Snips and Snails. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> though, uh, one, one of the important things, though, about Snips and Snails and Liar Bond is that the fact that they are three power and only two cost is if you're very lucky, you can actually uh, DFO turn two by doing stuff like uh, uh, play tank to opponents for wild problem, draw, uh, discards wildfire, flip vinyl, play angel wings to that problem, then play Snips and Snails or Liar Bond to your problem. You're DFOing, and you uh, flip your main. That's a pretty good turn, too. I mean, three points flipping your main. I, I, I like that. This is very strong. Yeah, it's not hot enough for me, but we'll talk more about that later. <laughs> and uh, let's see. What's the, what, what's the other card? Um, one, two, three. Oh, no, I think, yeah, we, we, I talked about all four. All four of the... Key, key components of this deck that aren't in the other deck. I mean, we do have cardboard boxes and we have uh, food fights and stuff, but I mean, you know how to use those. Those are just your standard disruption. Put oh. them apples in a box. This might actually be the wrong list I'm showing here. Yeah, I think there's no... a slightly updated one. Yeah, we keep messing with this stuff, so hooray. Yeah, they, I have the old they one. get tweaked all the time. Yeah, th those those, uh, Sepatral attacks are supposed to be food fights, but oh well. It's okay. You get the general gist. Whatever. Pumpkin, giant crocodile, it's basically the same thing. Anyway, aside from the problem deck, I think that's uh, all of the differences between this one and, and uh, Blazon. Though I guess, I mean, it's probably worth mentioning that Secret to Every Pony is like another Cloud Chaser. A free Cloud Chaser. It's very good. When you've got the three pink wreck mm -hmm. every time. Oh, yeah, absolutely. It's also great with uh, Spitfire. Yes, it is. Suddenly, that uh, Spitfire's come crashing down when you only had two AT. It's very strong. So, should we shift over to Blazon for a moment before we. Yeah, go yeah, back? Let's, let's, let's look at Blazon. So. Much like a certain hedgehog, I like going fast. And Blazon Amy? definitely... Amy? Hmm? I'm sorry? Amy? Amy the hedgehog? Yes. The... I, have a, I wield a hammer and I hit people with the, it. The fox thing? Fluttershy? <laughs> <laughs> sure. Blazon is a deck that tries to take as much advantage of Bluna's free movement as possible, and specifically runs a problem deck that is aggressively chosen to maximize your ability to start DFOs for the minimal amount of AT. Because Bluna depends so much on getting herself flipped uh, and getting up to a problem specifically, instead of choosing to run concerning cutie mark. We are choosing to run trading traditions here. And there is one card that really is the reason behind this decision, and it's Angel Wings. Kind of the namesake of both decks. Well, one of the namesakes. The other is Spitfire. Yeah, it's, well, uh, yeah, that's true. I mean, come on, Hot, hot Wings. It's, it's Fire it Wings, with. yeah, close yeah, enough. She's, she's, she's spicy. <laughs> can confirm is spicy the ability to dfo on turn two is kind of ridiculous and provided they have an easy to confront problem right provided they have an easy to confront problem but considering the full suite of new mains from defenders of equestria that a lot of players are very excited to try testing out all have confront requirement, or all need to confront to flip, it means most people are going to be running problems that are very, very easy to confront and are going to have a low confront requirement. The magic number is five for us. 
So if we see things like trading traditions, if we see things like concerning cutie mark, in the case of zipper will, if we see ancient research, like, yeah, yeah, ancient research, exactly. Rock or slide. Even, yep, rock slide also works. Any of the original one ones are also totally mm -hmm. fine. Yep. So where hot wings differs from, or I'm sorry, where blazing differs from original hot is that its primary color is in blue, and therefore it doesn't have access to the same level of card draw. Uh, at least not the same level of repeatable card draw. It does still have good card draw, but instead it needs to maximize its point value, or it needs to maximize its its plays for optimal point scoring. And there are four cards that really help it do this. The first one is Prince Rutherford. You probably aren't surprised to see that in this list. Let's Prince honest. Rutherford it's... in a Bluna deck? This technology has never been used before. No wing, wink, wink. Why, I, I say, this seems unusual and innovative. Infested by sweetie bots. <laughs> I, I like the amount of hasty friends. How tasty. You like the amount of what? Hasty friends. There's, there's a good number of hasty friends here, and Rutherford is one of them. Rutherford also, of course, provides the very valuable Frighten, which is becoming more and more relevant as opposing friends are getting stronger and stronger abilities. Yep. There's a lot of stuff that you kind of want to frighten, and you don't want your opponent to be able to have. And a great example of something like this might be a plaid striped spoonie. You know, Boom. why not just why not pay that tax once instead of playing it for every card that you're going to play over the course of the turn? And of course, the big advantage here is you can play Rutherford anytime you have priority, and it's a way to be able to move Bluna. Most people are already aware of how Bluna can move between confront steps so that you can maximize your power on the field with the minimal number of cards. So naturally, another card that is going to be key to the blazing version of Hot Wings is going to be Cadence in pink. Ah, hasty Cadence. A good cadence? You know, a lot of people, when, when this card first came out, were arguing with me that she was just not going to see play because she has two wreck. Totally worth it, one hundred percent. I mean, she, fair. She Just needed be better, a way to set. <laughs> she would be better with one, but that's okay. Now, the thing here is, we have the choice to either run Hasty Cadence or to run the Hasty Night Glider, and the reason that we're choosing to run Hasty Cadence is based on our problem deck selection. Right. Far more of our problems are going to require that we have the uh, pink. You see, and I mean, given the ones that are requiring two colors, we don't really have a choice in the matter. But it's especially useful to keep us on our requirement for pink as much as possible in case the opponent decides to remove all of our pink entry or that, all of our pink friends. That too, yeah. Because as it turns out, when your main is blue and moves to wherever it wants, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense to put a hasty blue friend in there. If that's all it yeah. does. Well, especially when you have uh, X plus not X problem requirements. Yes. So yeah. Cadence plus uh, plus Luna, Princess Tag Team, can confront every single problem in this deck that's not Fire One Ready. Correct. And Raylor brings up the point that everything is a two-color requirement for problems, and that's correct. And the reason for this is still the fundamental theory for aggro decks in this game um, which is, you should be able to realistically confront every problem except your starting problem in your deck with exactly one other, or with exactly two characters. Yeah, you, you, need, a, you need a good reason not to, like blackmail. <laughs> sure, yeah. there, there are reasons not to, but if you are playing an aggro deck, that is something that you want to do. Right, two characters. Yeah. Now, Continuing on the theme of pink, I think we, we've got to talk about definitely my favorite card in this list, Dr. Gabby, the Rock and Roll Griffin. Really? Because I thought you were going to go over here to Drinking Duel, but, you know, you got to well, got to go hit up Gabby now and then, right? <laughs> I got to get my fix, man. Yeah. Gabby is such a spectacular card, and exactly the sort of thing that Bluna is looking for here. Because... Gabby is able to be played off of just about any other pink friend that's in the deck. 
Her requirement is low enough to where two is pretty easy to hit. She triggers automatically at the end of each of your turns. She can trigger from anywhere. And refilling your hand to half of its maximum is a great way to make sure you're never going to run out of stuff because then you're working with at least five cards on your next turn. And that's very, very key. Four four cards is a lot. Four like if if uh if Gabby said three, she'd still be good, but I don't think she would be nearly as bonkers as she is. No, it'd still like, be it'd still be pretty whack. I'm gonna be honest here. Yeah. The ability to go from oh darn, I'm out of cards to look at all these cards. Yeah. There like, is three, no three is good, but four is four is a lot. Like going from zero to four is huge. Going from even two to four is pretty solid. There is no aggro deck that doesn't look at this and just you see that look on Gabby's face? That's what the aggro deck does. Yeah. Is, is Unless you bad. already have vinyl, because then you look like four. You can have a hand have size eight. of four or less? What? <laughs> Gabby looks at aggro decks that do not have a method of refilling their hand and says exactly what she's saying in that image. Come at me, bro. Do you even <laughs> draw? You do if you pick me up! So Gabby is definitely one of the tech cards here. Now, since Gabby does not stack with herself, we can't use her to get above four cards, like, say, to infinite cards, which would be awesome, if at all possible. <laughs> But we can't do that. We don't necessarily want to see three. So two is an appropriate number. And the last card that we really want to focus on that's uh, unique to Blazing is one of the dilemmas. Specifically, Buckball Championship. Brand new dilemma that just came out. Buckball Championship is more expensive than either just Clanning Around or Tyrex Reign of Terror. But it's slightly easier to confront. We'll have several characters that can that can confront it on their own, like Spitfire with one instance of experienced, or Soren if you eat stuff, or Pinkie Pie Holiday Spirit, or Lily if she eats something. And it gives you an additional point whenever it becomes solved, even if something goes horribly wrong and you lose the face-off. And that point acceleration is what Blazin is all about. Blazin needs to get to 15 as soon as possible. Because though it has some card draw supplementing in here through discarding Spitfire or retiring her at end of turn or using Gabby. Or even Wonderbolt's Wrap. I mean, or even Wonderbolt's Wrap if you have to. It still is not going to have the same level of refueling that original Hot Will. No, yeah. Uh, Bluna knows she has a time limit. She, she has some things that she can extend it a little bit by, but it's still there, so she wants points. Now, Bluna can absolutely meet that time limit. That's not a, oh, yeah, that's not a question. She can do it. But Buckball Championship ensures that she's capable of doing that and also helps give another option for anti-farming. If you looked, one of the key cards for original Hot was Snips and Snails. And if you look in Bluna, we don't have Snips and Snails because Snips and Snails has a three pink requirement. And we want to try to keep our pink requirement for cards in our off-color down to two. In fact, we have. Well, in fact. What, the cardboard box? Oh, belly flop. Well, that's an exception. Oh, so, <laughs> so amazing. Now, with all that being said, there are a couple cards that are definitely shared between these two decks here. One or two. Or, you know, a lot. A lot. You want to talk about the uh, the favorite one? Oh, Soren? Or, no, Angel Wings. Oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, I was going to say here. Yeah, so Angel Wings is... Angel Wings is... Um, uh, spoilers. Spoilers here. Um, I, I really wish I could have gotten this out last week, but spoilers, Angel Wings is Cloud Chaser's number one pick for the set. Uh, Angel Wings is kind of nuts. Day in a draft, I had Baka, sorry, a, uh, what's her name? Ember. <laughs> I don't even remember the weird name. I had an Ember and an Angel Wings in my pack. And I, I had to choose the Angel Wings. Like, <laughs> I'm here to win. <laughs> you have enough Ultra Rares anyway, right? You can never have enough Bacas. Uh, yeah, so a Angel Wings is, 
Angel Wings was pretty good. Uh, two power for zero AT is a good rate. Like, it, it's a good rate. <laughs> it's pretty tough to beat. And of course, there are a couple incredibly strong plays in the meta right now that rely on Angel Wings into something else. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, er earlier how I was like, you know what, that's not spicy enough for me. Here's what spicy enough for me is. Turn two, Angel Wings, Angel Wings, Night Glider. DFO for five points. Thanks. Yeah. It happens. It that does. happens. More commonly than you think. Yeah, I mean, this, this uh, well, the um, Blaze Inversion is quite reliable on turn two DFO as long as you... Uh, as long as your opponent's prowl is uh, five or lower. It yeah. can get scary. And Angel Wings, of course, can still see play even outside of just trying to start the DFO. If you're running Trading mm -hmm. Divisions and you're running either a blue or a pink main and you want to just be an absolute jerk, there's nothing quite like a turn one Angel Wings into Snails. snails. Yeah. Or if you're going second, turn one. Angel Wings into Rainbow Dash on even ground. Why would you be so mean? <laughs> because Rainbow Dash is a jerk. She is. Plus, Rainbow Dash is one of uh, Angel Wings' favorite ponies. She wants her autograph and yeah. has plushies. And will you sign my hooves? So, yeah, Railer is pointing out, you know, two bit bits into Angel Wings is just like, what? Like that that's a lot. Uh we don't actually have two bits, but we do have Wonderbolt Strap. Which uh more or less pulls off the same thing. Yep. I don't think either okay, there's the buck balls. That that's the only thing I think in either of our deck lists where that would really matter. Two bits yeah. into something that's not a friend. Yeah, that's that's about it. Now, another card, also in blue and pink, the multicolor cards. Uh, that is just completely nuts from this next, from DOE, is Spitfire. Yeah, Spitfire. Bet you never thought you'd see an uncommon with four abilities on it. I mean, we saw one in Canelot Knights. Eh, I don't really count that. I mean, just because she's a main. But yeah, four abilities, uncommon, all very good abilities. And she loves her job. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and unlike Applejack, Spitfire doesn't need two sides to have four abilities. So, let's go over these abilities in order, shall we? Sure, sounds good. Hasty. Still the best keyword in the game. Pretty good pretty keyword. Much. Uh, I don't know, Inspired was pretty good for a while. Until <laughs> it got fixed. Yeah, so Hasty lets you play Spitfire on either player's turns. That's pretty good. I mean... It's okay, normally, but, you know, it, it works well with Bluna because it lets you, you know, do the DFO trick or, you know, or it works with uh, Luna be or with uh, Vinyl because of the uh, discount. But, you know, on its own, Hasty is good, but I don't think we'd be running Spitfire if she was just a three cost, three power Hasty, would we? No. No. No, no we would not. No. So let's move on to the next ability. Experienced. So experienced means she gets bigger if there are copies in the discard. And that's never going to happen. Why would she ever go to the discard pile? I mean, experienced on the surface seems like it's just a little kind of side perk. That yeah. eh, it's kind of inconsequential. Maybe it'll happen. Maybe your opponent bills you. Or maybe you had to discard something yeah. to Nightmare Moon. Mm, we need to keep reading. Right. So, third ability is uh, when she enters play, you may discard a card. Well, discarding? That sounds bad. The, the, this next, the, the next part of the sentence better be pretty good. Oh, wait, you get to frighten something? Wait, don't we already have a hasty friend that frightens something when it comes into play? That's, now, like, universally good? Now we have six copies. <laughs> now we have six copies. But this one's more expensive. Buy one. Yeah, you have to pay three and discard a card. But yeah, draws worth. A card. But then, Eventually. yes, we have the fourth ability. <laughs> when she is put into the discard pile from anywhere, from your hand, from play, from the discard or, or from the deck, 
you get to draw a card. This is crazy. That is crazy. This means that you can have plays like I have these two Spitfires in hand, and I really only need one, but I need to stop my opponent from confronting this key problem or shut off their friend. And I'd rather not spend a bunch of cards to do it. Why don't I play a Spitfire at Hasty on my opponent's turn, and then discard another Spitfire to frighten their friend, and then draw a card to replace that Spitfire I discarded, and give my Spitfire another power? Yeah. Three cost, four power, you frightened a friend, and you did it on their turn, and maybe you moved your Bluna too. It's just outrageous. You thought rarity was outrageous. Uh-uh. Welcome Spitfire to, truly welcome, outrageous. Welcome to the Wonderbolt Academy. Spitfire truly outrageous. I would not be sad. Aura, make this a thing. <laughs> what, well, Christ, what is it going to do? When you confront this card's problem, move this card home to frighten all your opponent's friends? Eh, sounds good. Print it. And then, draw, and then draw a card for each card, each friend frightened that way. Yeah. There we go. Print it. Continuing with the multicolor shared theme we have here, our favorite pie fanatic. And we're not talking about the pinky kind. Ah, it's... yes, Soren. Soren is the lowest power friend, or tied for the lowest power in any of the decks. Yes. But has the potential to be the highest power friend in any of the decks. For sure. Soren is a great kind of surprise play and an excellent way to make as much use out of those leftover hasty friends in the Blazon version that you have sitting at home from a couple turns prior. In the vinyl list, that's not necessarily as much, but Soren can still give you that big boost when possible. And let's be real, Berry Punch and Orange Swirl and Soren combos are really nice. A little bit. It's like, wait, I can pay one to give my Soren plus four power and remove my opponent's best friend? And there's almost nothing they can do about it? Mmm. That's a, that's a good play. That's what we like that's to call some good efficiency. Pie. That is some good pie. It's a cheese pie. So Soren is a great friend. Um, and Soren also has just shown his versatility in a number of different decks. You know, we see him in this aggro list trying to maximize his power gain. Soren can very easily go in a more control slanted version of blue and pink, designed to grab your opponent's friends whenever possible and just eat them. And Soren even has seen play in combo and pie eating contest. I think the only thing we haven't seen Soren in is farming. And I don't think we're going to. Probably not. That sounds like a challenge. <laughs> okay, we could see it. I don't think we're going to see it done very effectively. No, I agree. And I then. Uh, but it's easy to just like go. I built Applejack for farming. I threw three Sorens in here just to prove you wrong. <laughs> Feathers. Just throw in some berry dreams. Just to, just that was good. Foil berry dreams though yeah. has to be foil. Of course. And then uh, Mr. Mr. Mosh Pit Pilot, you want to talk about two of the best commons to come out of DOE? Okay. So hey, remember that thing about you know stealing opponents' friends and. Turning them into power on Soren. How about I steal your friend and then your friend does a, you know, badly coordinated dive onto one of your other friends? That is flawlessly coordinated and executed. Mm. Ignore the impending impalement coming from the unicorn horns. It's not, it's, it's fine. They know how to practice water safety. Yeah. She, look, she's got her she's got her floaties. She's got little floaty things, that's right. Anyway, yeah. yes. Drinking duo up here and belly flop. Yeah. Hello. 2AT remove two of whatever I want. Okay. And Berry Punch and Orange Swirl are so good compared to previous steal a friend until end of turn effects that we've seen because not only are they cheaper. And not only are they lower requirement, 
but they're not location restricted. And that's always been a big obstacle that we've seen before. You know, you either have cards that have a higher cost and a very high requirement, like a simple mix-up, or you have cards like Hoops, which also have a high cost and a high requirement and only affect things at their location. Mm -hmm. And very punch and orange world just says, no, we're, we're none of this. We're just one AT, just grab something. Yeah, so you can take some, like, let's uh, borrow their Night Glider, use it to confront that you wouldn't have been able to otherwise, win the face off by five or more, score some extra points, then belly flop. Or Soren. Eh, whatever. All sounds good. This is especially great because if your opponent's been playing stuff to problems, you can just dump one of these things somewhere, and now, great, not for the cost of one AT, you've moved Luna, stolen something of theirs, removed power from the impending face-off, just, it goes on and on and on. And at the end of it, you belly flop just to add insult to injury. Would you say that's one AT worth well spent? Pretty sure that's worth. P pretty sure. Now... Those are, and of course, then we have Wonderbolt's Wrap, which, as we mentioned before, is a great way to save you even more AT on your cards and help you get those surprise DFOs as early as possible. But we're choosing to play Wonderbolt's Wrap over two bits because modal cards are good. Yeah. Correct. The, uh, you probably won't use the draw version in the final build very frequently, and you probably won't use the move version in the Luna build very frequently, but they're both there, you know. I've done it occasionally. They've happened. But usually you kind of use it as a two bits. And then, of course, I mean, Night Glider. Does it have to be said? <laughs> you thought we'd go this far into, I mean, into blue aggro decks without talking about <laughs> Night Glider. No, we're not going to talk about her because it was obvious. Yeah. Look, this, I mean, this card well, I mean, right here. See it? Look, look. Okay, well, good. So, so there if is we... an. <laughs> there, there is an obvious card that's not in here, though. In either one. And that's Thunderlane. Thunderlane? No, yeah, Thunderlane. Oh, yeah. I actually continue to insist that Thunderlane is not an auto-include. I mean, yeah. he's not in here. So Thunderlane's <laughs> not in either of these builds for a very good reason. He's too he, expensive. He is, <laughs> well, and he is too expensive. He kind of likes pumpkins. He likes he, pumpkins and ponies belly flopping. Also, it, there's the really horrifying threat of, boy, that's a cool seven power Thunderlane with two counters on him you have there. It'd be a real shame if he was mine for a turn. He was mine oh, for Oh boy. Mine for a turn, and then I moved him around pointlessly, and then, you know, after I'm done, he's going to take a stage dive. <laughs> no, Thunder, Thunderlane clearly needs to stay in Muffin Mare focused combo decks where he reaches 36 <laughs> power. I mean, Th Thunderlane is still an insanely good card. Don't don't get us wrong. Sure. Like, it just this is not the place for him. This is nope. this is going to sound strange, but these decks are too fast for Thunderlane. Yes. yes. Yeah. Like Spitfire is even pushing it on the cost. Yep. Mm, but sure, our abilities are just it. so good. Yeah. 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 Exactly. <laughs> so, one thing we do want to talk about, though, are a few of the other inclusions here, which are slightly different between the lists. Well, well we forgot to oh, talk sorry. about Tyrrhic Terrain real quick. Okay. That is in both lists. I mean... But, it, I mean, it's Tyrrhic Terrain. We're playing right. blue. <laughs> yeah. You, you want dilemmas. Dilemmas are good. Tell us why dilemmas are good. There are two main reasons. Uh, they they uh, let you bypass Troublemakers, and they yes, let they you did. start... Face-offs easier. Like, if yes, the it, opponent has a... Like, wait, it cost me how many to confront that? Eh, no, I like no, this it five. Costs five four, is better. Five or four, whatever. Yep. Plus, uh, Blazin has another huge reason. Forget your ten and four centric. I'm just going to go with this five. Yeah, yeah, but Blazin has another reason. It doesn't have a yellow or purple or white or <laughs> orange... Or the ability to stop fire when ready from, you know, doing its thing. Yep. That but, is, yeah, that is, that is a little fun. And, and one of the key uh, 
what one of the key kind of tech plays that you might try with Blazon sometime is you might see a fire when ready come up after starting a problem face off and your opponent might not pop it. And that's probably a mistake. Mm -hmm. Five dilemmas. And a lot and, of hasty friends. And a lot of hasty friends. And a lot of cost reduction equals, oh, did I just score seven points on that DFO? No, Why, nine you scored if nine. Because <laughs> you have a night glider there? Yeah. Or, so, or ten because you have a buck ball? Yeah. So, there you go. Yeah, the, so the real tech, the real tech play though, is to confront uh, your problem or the opponent's problem. Doesn't matter. Then confront uh, just clowning around, replacing your problem, and hoping. I've done that. I, I've it, seen it done, it, and it's gross. It worked once. It has worked less often. Yeah. But yes, yeah, still good. It is worth noting, however, that this is a somewhat risky play because if your opponent disrupts your attempted a DFO, you better have an answer in your pocket. Yep. <laughs> now you can also do weird things in Blazon with Fire When Ready where you play a friend to that problem and choose to trigger Luna's movement before you trigger Fire When Ready's ability, so you Which... actually replace the problems twice. Did somebody say game state? Game state. Game state. Yeah. So that's a fun one. So okay, so a few of the uh, other cards. Yeah, it's important to know that one trap that a lot of players might fall into, especially especially newer players who are just kind of picking up the game and just kind of seeing the the ebb and flow of playing friends and starting faceoffs, is the ability to be single minded in your focus. Look at the number of cards that are present in these decks. Uh, we can flash back to original hot here for a bit if you want. Uh, look at the number of cards that are present in these decks that aren't specifically designed to help you get power at problems. There's actually a pretty significant number. I mean, this Apocalypse attacks is supposed to be Food Fight, Sea Breeze's Flower, Cardboard Box, Belly Flops, Berry Punch and Orange Swirl hardly count in terms of power. I mean, they kind of do, I mean, if you take something big. I mean, okay, sure. But nonetheless, we're still talking about, like, 10, 12 cards-ish? Uh, uh, about a third of the deck, yeah. Yeah. And that is because you cannot ignore the threats that are going to be posed by whatever your opponent is doing. Whether they're playing farming, whether they're playing control, whether they're trying to combo off, whether you're in the aggro mirror match, it doesn't matter. Decks need answers. I the glass answers. cannons do one thing very well, but only one thing. And as soon as you throw a pebble in their path, well, yeah, <laughs> you have bad times. So because of this, you have to anticipate in your local area, in your local metas, what are you seeing most commonly? If you're seeing a lot of aggro decks, then a lot of these removal options are going to be very good. If you're seeing a lot of farming decks, the removal might not necessarily be as good, but you might want to put some extra dilemmas in there. And the cardboard boxes might be appropriate. Yeah, the deck lists that we have here, they're uh, they're they're flexible. I mean, there's a few cards you're not going to want to take out. You're not going to want to take out the Angel Wings, for example. But like, maybe you don't need quite so much removal. Maybe your local meta has no resources that matter at all, so you don't need to play Sea Breeze's Flower. Uh, I, that no. causes bad. That causes bad habits, though. You never. It, it does, but I'm I'm just saying. You should always include resource removal in your deck unless you have a very, very, very specific reason not to. Unless you know what you're doing. Yeah. Or well, you well, could, you enough, could be me in my meta where I refuse to run Sea Breeze's Flower because most of the time they'll, just, it's just like, oh great, and then Sweetie Bill pulls it back from the discard. Great, that was totally worth the two AT, wasn't it? <laughs> <sighs> yeah, you might want to swap out Sea Breeze's Flower for trash in that case. Yeah. Or that, that pink resource removal that we totally have. Uh, speaking of, did we want to mention why we're using Sea Reese's Flower instead of Trashed? Do you sure. even remember? Yes, I do. Okay. <laughs> well, I remember I remember why we're using Sea Reese's Flower in, uh, in Blazon. Which is actually really funny. 
Uh, sea Breeze's flower has the ability to be played even if you don't necessarily have the resource that you want to get rid of immediately. Uh, just to keep your hand slightly empty so that you can draw with Gabby at the end of the turn. <laughs> yeah. Well, the the other reason though is um a lot of a lot of decks that uh have key resources also have resource removal. So if you put trash on something, they just go, okay, special beam cannon. Okay, beavers, whatever. And then your trash didn't do much. I mean to be fair, Beavers is going to have the ability to disrupt Sea Breeze's flower at the same well, speed that sure, it can disrupt sure. trash. Yeah. Beavers can, yeah. But the, um, key, the key with Sea Breeze's flower is unless your opponent has resource removal in their hand at the moment that you play it, it's going to be more useful than trash. Right, yeah. It costs a little more, but it's security, basically. Right. And you can actually keep your hand empty. I mean, Cheese did that in a game we just played earlier today against a deck that had no resources and played two Sea Breeze's flowers when he had a Gappy on the field. Yeah. Draw them cards. Draw them cards. Draw them cards. One, two, three, four. The Sea Breezes last until end of turn or end of phase? The uh, color change. End of the phase. Darn. Okay. Yeah, no uh, You, to say no you wanted to yellow. confront with a yellow main, did you? Get out. Yes. No. <laughs> Get out. It's relevant when we have our color plus not color cards. Get out. Or in uh, Blazon's case, our one pro problem that is both pink and blue. Yep. Now, uh, briefly, let's touch on the kind of greedy amounts of entry that we're running in these decks. The generally accepted safe number for the number of entry friends into your off color, or if you're in a monocolor deck, your main color that you should be playing, is eight. Minimum. Yeah. And if, if Sonic were on the stream, she would correct me and say, clearly eight is not enough, because in our featured match, I never drew it. <laughs> in that one stream that we did. Yes, yes. Because I, well, I, 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 you drew some, I just removed it really fast. Yeah, that's fair. And... Um. The reason that you want eight is that gives you about a slightly higher than a 75% chance to have at least one of those pieces by your second turn. Including the mulligan, yes. That's not including the mulligan. Oh, it's not including the mulligan? That is oh. not including the mulligan. So that mulligan's going to add somewhere between an extra 10 to 15%. Okay, yeah. By the second turn. But, you know, we have a few ways to cheat right. in these decks. Exactly. And so that's why Blazing can get away with only running seven pieces. And Original Hot can get away with only running six. How, are, how is Original Hot cheating here? Vinyl. Vinyl. Yeah, vinyl kind of vinyl cheats. V vinyl says, oh, uh, well, I was going to draw some extra cards anyway. You know, you don't want to pay two to draw in an aggro deck, but, you know, you're not super sad to do it. And so you're going to see a lot of extra cards. And sometimes you're just going to do something like play Berry Punch, move Vinyl. I didn't have blue. That, that's fine. I'll have blue next round, I'm sure. <laughs> you, you just draw so many cards, you don't need set, uh, eight entry. Yep. And in Blazon, because your ideal turn two friend play is Angel Wings, she's providing you a method of entry. And also Soren. And also Soren. Also, Soren, and if you had a uh, blue friend, Cadence, and like all, all of your pink friends, suddenly you can play off of Bluno. So, again, there are some generally accepted standard rules for constructing a deck. And if you have a good reason, you can break those rules. And it can pay off. You just have to make sure you have a good reason. And then you get to the finals at Everfree, and your opponent says, Ha ha! Ah, yes. So, and then you're sad. And then Nightmare Moon wins Everfree. Yes. So, let's, let's talk about the counters then. Yeah, well, well, yeah, well, just saying, you know, there is risk, is what I'm saying. You know, sure. 
it, it, it's not a riskless opportunity, but you know, high risk, high reward is sometimes worth it. And to uh, quote Johnny Wu, uh, winner of uh, 2015 Gen Con, well, I mean, they split, but he got the title. Um, sometimes you have to be greedy at this game. Greed is how you get ahead. Now, there are, even though these decks are very fast and capable of reaching 15 points at alarming speed and packing enough removal to disrupt opposing strategies, it doesn't necessarily mean you're never going to see a roadblock. And there are some things that can slow you down here. Like Troublemakers? Yeah, Troublemakers. Troublemakers can definitely slow you down. And taxing effects of things like plaid stripe spooning can Spoons. definitely slow mm -hmm. you down. Spoons and stacks of suitcases and wake up calls and oh, harsh these... judges. Harsh judges, uh, kind of harsh That's judges. That's actually not a problem. I mostly just There's... have problem with spoons and stacks of suitcases. There's a lot of removal. Some white cards. Couple, couple white cards. Mostly it's white cards. Whites. Uh, Problems. Oh, you know what else is fun? Accessorized. Yeah, accessorized is a pain. Fashion disaster is also a pain. Skitter, I'm mostly looking at you. Welcome to my meta. Um, AT disruptions also kind of a problem. Yep. Especially in the list that prefer to save up their AT and go for the burst turns rather than yeah. confront single problems. Yeah. So just be, just be aware of what you are expecting to come up against in your local meta, whether it be playing with your friends or whether it be uh, attending nearby events like regionals or, you know, pre-releases, uh, draft events, store championships, you know, any, anything that comes up. And this is just kind of a universal tip. Adapt your strategy based on what you expect to see. Not every deck is going to work at the same level in every single meta. Right. And it's important to make sure that you pack answers to things you see. Or just glass cannon hard. Yeah. Yes. I mean, you can also just sonic it. Or you yeah. could just run combo. Just <laughs> that really needs... I mean, you, you could just run combo. I think I'll just do that. So, so you take out the Seabreeze's Flowers, and another card, and then three other cards, and you put in three copies of Singing Barrel and three RTS. <laughs> totally, totally how you play this. Sure. And then, you know, if you're worried about combo in your local meta, you take out the two Seabreeze's Flowers and one copy of another card, and then three other cards, and then you put in three copies of Singing Barrel and three copies of Destiny Dream. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'll quit burning on feathers. Oh, we, we also I'm need... Not, I'm not burning on feathers. That worked. It did. Yeah. We also need yellow pair of sprites and nightmare moons, and... Um... Changing the mimics, and in fact, let's just scrap the whole thing and just start over. Let's just build control. <laughs> yeah, why are we playing aggro again? I don't remember. Something about going fast. Some stupid hedgehog said something. But no, seriously, like, we've both played these decks a lot, uh, and they're pretty effective. Even the games where they don't win, because no deck has a 100% win record, um, they, they usually put up a good fight. I mean, aside from the obvious, whoops, I never drew entry. <laughs> yeah, the key advantage with these decks is not only are they effective, but they're accessible, and they're fun. Yeah, so the uh, the vinyl one has, uh, I mean, you need Rock and Rave, obviously. Um, and it has two Ultra Rares and zero Super Rares. And the Bluna one has four Ultra Rares and two Super Rares? Correct. Yeah. So, a little pricier, but not by a whole lot. No. And you don't need Rock and Rave. Right, exactly. Oh, the, that, that, that very difficult to find set that definitely doesn't appear at dollar stores for is... a dollar. <laughs> the vinyl version only running two night gliders? Yeah. Oh. Yeah, you're only running two because you draw so many cards, you can yeah. find the night glider. Yeah. You usually don't need more than one. 
agro yeah. slugfests are are wonderful and it's great to be able to have an aggro deck you can pull out when you're playing against a new player uh and whether i by new player i don't necessarily mean someone um, new to the um, game because this is a little this is kind of mean for that this is extremely <laughs> mean for that yeah you mean new I, to like competitive scene. not even not even new to competitive but just new to you you know when you meet oh, a player for you. the first okay. time when you're meeting a player for the first time and you want to play a game with them you plot combo <laughs> i mean you're not wrong but then when they get upset with you, then you say, I'm sorry, let me just play aggro. And then, and then okay. you and then you blow them up with this thing. And then they hate you. And then you then you can't play against anybody anymore. And then you question why you build these decks at all. Hello, darkness mine. No. Of course we're kidding here. Yeah. yeah it, it is a lot is... of fun, but uh Please just take these uh, these lists as uh, maybe inspiration for your own deck building adventures. Uh, if you've been wondering uh, or looking, are, for are you a plugging list... cursed cords now? Why not deck building so, adventure? I mean, sure. Let, I'm fine with plugging cursed cords. Ah. <laughs> cursed cords is is pretty cool guy. He builds with Cadence Main and doesn't afraid of building with Cadence Main. <laughs> He did it twice now. He did. He's a trooper. He survived. Um, please, like I said, uh, use these lists for inspiration, um, but make them your own. Find mm -hmm. the pieces that are going to work best for you. Uh, just keep in mind the reasoning we gave behind most of these cards and why they're in here. Um, something that maybe. Do you have the, the friend tally for your deck? Google, it's 32 still, isn't it? Uh, I think. Right. Uh, no, I think it's a little less. Oh, right, because you dropped the Rutherfords for the... Yes. For the food fights. For the food fights. So I believe that brings you down to 29? To 30. Oh, there right, are only two only, Rutherfords. You only had two, that's right. Yeah. So there are 30 friends out of 45 cards in the original hot list. And there are 31 friends. Uh, no, not quite 31 friends. We dropped a we dropped a Gabby and we dropped a dilemma. So thirty friends in the Luna version. So there's thirty friends in each version. Well, it looks like twenty eight in uh, now that I'm counting it. It's actually twenty eight in the original version, original hot version. Because we took out another entry, and I guess another friend got sacrificed somewhere along the way. I mean, the key is to keep the key is to keep your friend count as high as humanly possible, so that you never run out of stuff you can play. Right. And that's how you hot wings. Hot wings, yeah. And uh, yeah, like the, like we said before, there could very well be a Scootaloo hot wings. We just haven't built it. Mostly because Bloom is too much fun. Tasty, taste like just the the DFO tricks with Luna. Most, yeah, most fun. Is real fun. Man, though, Scootaloo with Gabby like would have a really strong late game. It'd be, okay. It'd be pretty good. I mean, we saw uh, Scootaloo pink control do decently. Well, isn't Scootaloo more about moving rather than just playing yeah. everything out? There would be some fairly significant differences between what we've presented here and a Scootaloo list. The vinyl list would probably be a better source of inspiration, although you will need to take some things from the Luna disc, like uh, Gabby, for example. Yeah. Do you want to talk about the list that might actually include RTOs? That might be the Scootaloo list. I don't know how you do it, but... Good barrels. Tri-wings? Tri-wings, sure. Man, that would be greedy, and I love it. <laughs> and there have been uh, successful decks that have uh, just splashed for RTO. Like, it, it works sometimes. Yeah, it does maybe someone try it curse had already said he would Railer likes blue white maybe, maybe we can convince him to play blue pink white well i can i can convince people to play blue pink white you can, you can keep soren and then you just run like party favor trender hoof trender hoof and... ouch 
the soprano and burst of speed. Okay, and... hold on. Why didn't we call Pie Eating Contest Team America? I mean, it's basically like the pink is. It, it was originally America combo. You think we wouldn't go there? I don't know. No one told me about this. I, I do kind of remember though. Anyway, do we have anything else we want to add about Hot Wings for, for the stream tonight, other than the fact that Angel Wings is still not the worst pony to come out of Wonder Bolts Academy? Bring some blue cheese. I mean, I, I, just, I think this is going to be a very strong, very consistent uh, aggro deck. I mean, well, aggro Decks. archetype, I guess, yeah. Yeah. Um, pink pink blue aggro, is... Yeah. Pink Blue has been something I've been keeping my eye on ever since Gen Con, and I I think it's just getting better and better. And yes, we have a lot of good yellow options now too, and I'm not going to discount them. They they do different things though, you know. Yellow is never uh, going to be good. Yes, it is. Okay, well, fine. I mean, yellow. I didn't. I didn't realize we had Destiny draw here. Yellow. History. Yellow Hi, was Destiny. going to be good. Yellow was good once, and then they banned Magical Mailbox. And Fluttershy. Yeah. Oh yeah, and Guidance Counselor. Don't forget about yeah. that. Yellow was good twice. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but no, like, th th there are still good white aggro op options. There are still good... Uh... Wait, did I say yellow or white? Well, they're both. Both is true. There, there are still good white options. There are still good yellow options. Um, you'd probably have trouble pulling off pink-yellow, but I think any other combination of these four would be pretty solid. Yep, yeah. And maybe you'll be like, uh, like Europe, and do mono purple aggro. Do it. Do it. Anyway, I think that's it. Like, I think yeah. this is a just a good aggro deck, and I think that that's all there is to say. Yep, I'm I'm hungry for some hot wings now. Are you heading to Wingstop? No, Buffalo Wild Wings. Sucks. Wingstop. Sucks, Wingstop, obviously. Superior. Actually, uh, there's a barbecue place nearby here that's just better. For now, though, I think that will do it for our little highlight on Hot Wings, and I hope we can bring some future uh, deck discourses like this to you. This was kind of fun. Yeah. I mean, it had to be. There was pink. Fun! In, in, yeah, including that. We I, have to, not enough pinky pies. I am seeing, I <laughs> am too seeing many pinky what pies. you're putting on the table. I ain't picking it up. You should, you should pick it up and then turn it into teacup I, like you did at Everfree. I ain't picking it up. <laughs> okay. Way to not pick up what I'm putting down, Twilight. Railer says combo or control next. Or, or what? For deck discourse. Mm, I think see. one of those. <laughs> you, think, no. you think combo? No, we're clearly going to come out of left field and do farming. Well, I mean, I have we actually, ready to go. I yeah. can segue right into farming right now if we want. That's true. Purple farm. Purple farm. It's a thing. Tell your friends. Or don't tell your friends. Show your friends by showing up yeah. and beating them. Anyway. Anyway. I don't know, Raylor. We will we will have to see. I think we've got a couple options. So why don't you Do know what? Hmm? You, you know what? If you have an opinion, if any of you viewers have an opinion as to what you'd like to see, what archetype you'd like to see us cover next, you should send us some feedback. Tell us how can they send us feedback. I don't People, remember. Tell us how can they send us feedback. Well, I don't remember. We, <laughs> I don't remember. We, have, uh, we have a Twitter at at CIM underscore CCG. We have a Facebook at uh, just commentary is magic. Um, we have a Reddit account, which again is commentary is magic. And uh, I, I guess we have this Twitch if you want to use that. Or you, you, know, you could be old school and drop us an email at, uh, what is it? Uh, commentary is magic team at gmail.com. That sounds right to me. And I guess you could also flag us down at cons. I believe one or two of us might be going to Gen Con. 
or, or like all of us uh six seven a lot a lot many of us are also going to brony con and one of us is insane enough to go to brony can for a triple weekend of ponies i think two of us are insane enough two uh someone might show up extra maybe for a day okay but yeah i'm gonna be all three streaming all three oh yeah i mean i guess feathers might go to all three no she's not uh, going to gen no, con she's uh yeah because i think uh pokey pokemon pokemans yeah yeah i mean she's still insane enough to go to three things in three weeks so there's lots of ways to contact us, but we would really like yeah. to hear from you. We'd yes. like to hear if you appreciate this sort of thing, if you have fun or enjoy these sorts of streams, and what you'd like to see in the future. And we look forward to being able to continue to provide you with this content and, of course, live streaming events and live commentary from these major tournaments all around what is currently North America. Who knows? Maybe we'll get cheese to tell me from... Mm -hmm. Japan or something. Will there be any yeah. regionals coverage, or is that not happening? I don't see a reason why we couldn't do regionals. Coverage. Yeah, no, regionals should be fine. Uh, at least for... I mean, we might be able to do both um, Fresno and Seattle. This depends well, on... a... Go ahead. This depends a little bit on whether or not we can get the data for that. Well, I... it just so happens that I was just in Canada, and T-Mobile was mean to me, and I bought data, and it didn't work. So I have a bunch of data. Oh, fancy that. OK. I guess we'll get some wet, some West Coast uh, regional streams. Yeah, so regionals are what? This weekend, right? This weekend and next weekend? They start this upcoming weekend. Yeah. So yeah. you. Uh, Fresno is the 29th, I believe. Fresno is the 29th. Mm -hmm. And Seattle is the 30th. Okay. Well, we will first... probably not be doing anything this upcoming weekend. Well, I mean, we'll be like playtesting and stuff, but probably not streaming anything or anything. So maybe we'll have something the a weekend after the 30th. I sure hope so. The 6th? There's a couple of things I'd like to talk about. Got something so, on your mind? Yeah, if we if we do it on the sixth, then the weekend after that is BronyCon, and then the weekend after that is Gen Con. Oh goodness! So that's like our only opportunity. Yeah. All right. Well, keep okay. watching the subreddit and Facebook for yeah. more information. Yeah. If, if something happens on the sixth, you, we'll let you know. Until then, thank you everyone for joining us this evening. We are commentary is magic, and I am as always Grand Paws. I am the original hot Emperor Bugle. Big cheese. I I can't come up with a hot wings pun right now. I mean mine wasn't a pun. Yay eh, effort. Anyway. Say your name. Say your name. I'm Rainbow Shine. I did things wrong. And we'll see you all next time. Bye bye. <laughs>